it's game of the year time guys it's that time when we look back at the best games of 2021 there's not many there's not many guys it's been a tragic year if you watched my worst game of the year video you'll know exactly what i'm talking about so the first one that i want to talk about the first category is early access and the reason i'm doing early access first is because as i said last year a new rule just on my channel is that if your game is in early access it can only be in the best early access game of the year so it can't win game of the year because it isn't finished and the reason i did that is because i've seen games that were good in early access get totally broken with the day the, the release patch version one of it because the developers have just lost all interest so just because it's good in early access doesn't mean it's going to be brilliant when it comes out so that's what i'm doing and, and as always these are only games that's appeared on my channel so if you're saying oh mac this game was much better than any of the games you've mentioned yeah but if i haven't reviewed it it won't be on there for example there's a few games that were ps5 exclusives i haven't got a ps5 so i can't review them games so and obviously breaking my arm didn't help there was games that came out like halo that i never got to review because i couldn't play first person shooter I couldn't hold a controller or, or use a mouse so them games are not going to be in which is just it's just one of them things like it can't be helped so anyway early access game of the year we have everspace 2 which was a really cool space game it was one of the first games that i reviewed this year and it's still in early access still doing well it's very positive on steam i, I believe uh, i can't wait for that to come out it's got really good potential the second one is power wash simulator yes power wash simulator is a great zend out kind of game uh, it's now got co-op as well which is really good fun so i'm um, look it's a, it's a one of them games where you can just relax it's a really good good game going medieval a uh, medieval city builder brilliant fun absolutely brilliant fun in that uh, played the shit out of it loved it uh, valheim i mean my goodness valheim absolutely awesome game awesome game valheim uh, i did a couple of videos on that you'll remember really atmospheric game they just nailed everything in that game absolutely phenomenal i was one of the first uh, reviewers to even review it it was just looking for gems like that you know and then everybody dived on the bandwagon after that so i'm taking some credit uh my video i think got half a million views on, on that one uh, age of darkness final stand one i reviewed just recently it's a bit like they are billions but i like it better it's a really cool game it has a few flaws which I, I mentioned but it's really strong game it's fun game and i can't wait for that to come out but guys there's only one winner for this only one it's valheim valheim easily takes it it wasn't even like close uh, valheim uh, would have, Valheim would have won game of the year if it had been finished. That's how bloody good it is. It's light years ahead of anything the AAA industry's released in years. It's just a fantastically brilliant game. Uh, the next category is the best role-playing game of the year. There wasn't many of these uh, on my channel, unfortunately. In fact, there's only two that I'm actually putting up for a nomination, and that's uh, The Ascent, which was a really cool game that... Um, you could just shoot the shit out of everybody more them all down uh, it had role playing uh, elements as well it was really fun really enjoyed that game and pathfinder wrath of the righteous which blew me away now when i say role playing game i know there's different types of crpgs and all that i'm just putting them all under the same kind of category um just for this and i'm giving it to pathfinder because of the just the depth of that thing it was just phenomenal i really enjoyed it uh and nothing else that i played this year came close to it really so that's getting my rpg game of the year next up is strategy um we had humankind which was like civilization and i'd never really played a civilization game and so it was a big learning curve for me really enjoyable game very very deep very tactical uh, very strategic uh, but it was let down for me by the very poor combat now on the other side of that coin is age of empires 4 that's another franchise that i've never played and i had to learn um, and this was way more to my liking more like an rts strategy uh, the combat was really good the campaign was excellent uh, it was a game that i really got my teeth into and enjoyed now other types of strategy game that i covered was orcs must die 3 which is more of a tower defense shooty uh, uh, strategy game 
but really good very good uh, like it uh, Orcs Must Die 1 and 2, it was in the same vein as that, uh, so I really enjoyed it. And the Rift Breaker, which was again similar style, it was more tower defensey and shooty than deep, deep strategy. Although the strategy you had to you know, know what you were doing when you were building your base, but uh, I'm gonna give it to it's either Humankind or Age of I'm gonna give it to Age of Empires purely because I enjoyed that more with the type of combat. So, best strategy game, Age of Empires 4. Next category, guys, is shooters. Um, now, what we're going to put in here, I'll tell you what, we'll stick Far Cry 6 in just to bolster the numbers because there's not really that many. Um, so Far Cry 6, it ain't going to win it, but it has to be mentioned because the co-op was fun on certain missions. Um, but the, you know the big problem with Far Cry? It was far too easy. Even on the max difficulty, you could just run through just killing everybody. It was no challenge, really. And then you just throw in the absolutely awful f***ing characters. It just, yeah, not a good game. We got Back for Blood, which is a bit of a rip-off of Left for Dead. Um, it, it adds the card system, which Left for Dead didn't have, which I did start to really enjoy uh, after a while. It, it, beef things up a little bit in the campaign mode the co-op was great fun but it was massively massively let down by two things firstly the pvp the multiplayer was just not in the same league as left for dead and secondly the price the price was just overly inflated for what you get in the game um, so i think it was way overpriced but now you can get it for half price so it's definitely a contender because it is a damn fun game and i've had a really good laugh uh, playing through the campaigns. We've also got Deathloop uh, in this. Uh, really good concept of the game and the gunplay I thought was pretty good and really good uh, and, and the graphics were nice as well. So it was an enjoyable game but it was let down by very poor AI. Again, how many times are we going to say that in uh, AAA games? The AI just wasn't good enough. Um, it didn't run that great as well and it got a bit boring after a while. Um, but you know, it was a half decent game. Again, you can get that cheap now. Um, that's it. I mean, I'm not going to throw Vanguard or Battlefield in, the other two big AAA first person shooters of the year. Uh, so I'm going to give it to Back for Blood. I think Back for Blood was the most fun. I had the most enjoyment in Back for Blood out of uh, all of them uh, games there. Now, the overall game of the year. We've got Hitman. Let's let's talk about Hitman. Hitman, I really enjoyed Hitman 3 this year. I liked the maps, the scenarios. Um, it was just building on the success of the other Hitmen and doing it good. A lot of the time you'll get a sequel that's just bad, but they've really kept the magic going and it was really good. So that's a contender. Hitman 3 was good. Now, the Rift Breaker. Um, I'll talk you a little bit more about the Rift Breaker here. The, this great strategy game from an indie company. It's a cheap little indie game made by a few people and they captured the atmosphere with some great graphics, some great base rates. You've got to set up a base, you've got to protect that base, you've got to build this big machine to escape. It, it kind of, towards the end, got a little bit um, repetitive, but it was so much damn fun just getting through the maps and there's different modes. And do you know what the best thing about the Rift Breaker is? They are actively working now, even though it's released, to bring out a co-op patch for the game. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. And then we have Forza Horizon 5, which was a really decent uh, driving game. Um, but the fact that I've played Test Drive Unlimited 2 and 1 just makes me just look at Forza Horizon 5 and just think, my goodness, yes, you're good, but you're not great. You're not great, but it is a good, good game. Then we've got Age of Empires 4, which I've already mentioned. That has to be a contender. And do you know what I want to mention here as well? I want to throw another game in that hasn't been mentioned yet. Mr. Prepper. It came out this year. Um, really good little game that I, I really enjoyed uh, when I played it uh, in early access. It's now fully released. So it comes into this category now. Uh, it didn't belong in any of the other categories really because it's kind of a sandbox survival. But I, I just wanted to give that a mention because it is a good game. But... The actual game of the year for me, and do you know what? I'm going to say that in any other year, this wouldn't have won. And I don't want to take anything away from the game because it's a damn good game. It's the Rift Breaker. I've got to give it to the Rift Breaker because I've had more fun with that game than any of the other games. And that's damning for the gaming industry, really, because they didn't have the budget. 
this is a little double A company, and they've just beaten the shit out of the triple A companies, as has Valheim. Do you know what I mean? It's just crazy that you've got all these millions flying around to make games, and a game from a handful of developers on a budget that's what, I don't know, 15, 16 pound or whatever it costs, is actually better than these multi-million pound companies. So there you go, well done to the Rift Breaker. It's a great game and it deserves it. It absolutely does. Let's just hope guys that 2022 is a damn sight better than the absolute shit show that has been 2021 for AAA games. I made a video early this year saying that 2021 looks like it's gonna be good for games and it has been for AA games and indie games. But my goodness, it's been a travesty for everything else. When I say everything else, I mean the triple A gaming industry. You're an absolute fucking joke. Big man, Balo. So a real man takes care of his chica by hiding her in a stanka swamp. Fucking puta. Oh, no. oh, oh. that's just foreplay. Worst. <laughs>